Hello folks and welcome to Annie's Teach and Learn. That's right folks, class is in session. But first and foremost, before I really get into this video here, I want you guys to know that the game I'm about to go over, Ploxmon Card Game, I'm about to tell you the rules and then like the, uh, what is on the screen here, just to kind of explain and give you guys a better idea, like information about what is in this screenshot right here. But if you wanna learn how to play this game by yourself or download it and play with the community, head to the description down below, go to the Discord link, for the Ploxmon server, they can tell you how to download and install the game. And then there's even a section there called, if you go to like hashtag PT hyphen guide, you can like see all these rules are all written out so you can read them at your own pace and learn the game at your own speed. But if you prefer to watch it in a video and have somebody explain it to you, I'm your man, we're gonna do it. Today, this is the day. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do it guys, okay? So, say it's me versus you and we wanna win and you wanna play Ploxmon card game with the Annie B, right? I'll tell you right now, how do you win the game? That's what you wanna know, right? Every time you log on to a game, you load it up, you download it, you you set, sit down and play a card game or a dice game or a board game, you wanna know, how do I win? How do I beat my opponent? How do I claim beautiful, delicious victory, right? So this is how you do it in this game. You need, you need to get three prizes. How do you get prizes? You need to beat the boss mons that are in the center here. For in this example, Malo is the boss mon on the field. And we have to be the one to land the killing blow on Malo to win it as a prize. I've already won a prize from the first round. So like I was saying, to win a match, you need to destroy and you need to defeat three boss mon before your opponent does, and then you win. But you can also win if your opponent runs out of cards in their deck. As you can see here, it's displayed that we each have 10 cards in our deck with two sitting and waiting. How that sitting and waiting thing works, I know that sounds really weird, but there's a tribute section. You'll put a card in the tribute section, and if you are to lose the tribute, it affects the boss who the boss mon targets, I guess is the best way to explain. And in this case, let me explain what is on the tribute section right here. The, my opponent had played Kira Raff, and I played Grudgeon, and I lost the tribute. Because, just so you guys know, when you put a card into the tribute section, the HP has nothing to do with it, it is totally based off the power and speed stats of those cards in the tribute section, right? In the tribute board. Giraffe here has a power of four. Grudgeon has a power of three. Kieran wins the tribute. If Kiraf had three power, just like Grudgeon does, then we would tie and it would go off of our speed stats where Kiraf also has a four versus my one on Grudgeon. So I would still lose. Now, the importance between, the importance between winning and losing a tribute is totally dependent on what the middle boss monster is about. Some boss monsters uh, give you better benefits if you lose the tribute. So, you know, play accordingly. Look at your boss monster, read its ability, figure out how, what your game plan is for that round. Because it's gonna change. It's like it's like waves in the ocean, man. It's like, it's crazy. It's, it's a lot of fun, it really is. So looking at Malo here, we see that it's level two because this is round two. Its name is displayed there. And look at its HP, it's in this little heart right here. That means it has 50 HP. The first person to not deal 50 HP, but deal the killing blow will win Malo as a prize, right? That's the whole goal of this round here. To see Malo's abilities, they're all listed here in this little gray box. You can also see that it has an attack stat of one and a speed stat of three plus. I'll get into that plus in just a second. But for right now, let's go to its attack stat. Boss Mob's attack stats come in three different flavors. They come in single target attack, AOE, and then poison AOE. Now, I'm gonna touch on the Poison AoE first because it's the most complicated one. In this specific scenario, we lost the Tribute, right? And, and AoE attacks are the same for most boss monsters, right? If you lose the Tribute, you get hit with the higher number. If you win the Tribute, you get hit with the lower number. But Poison is special. If you lose a Tribute, like we did here, we're gonna get a hit with that higher number. He's gonna put a three Poison count on us. So at the end, after everybody's already attacked, so we go through one fight cycle of Draconics, Ultimo, Malo, Bullberry, Champy. Once Champy attacks, all the poison damage will be dealt out, and then everybody's gonna take like three damage or one damage, depending on like who lost and won the tributes. Something else to keep in mind, when you're doing regular AoE damage, it's just the flat damage. So we lost the tribute, so we're gonna be taking three damage while our enemies here are gonna be taking one damage. If it's a single target attack, just like Malo actually has here, we lost the tribute, so when Malo, it is Malo's turn to attack, he's gonna end up hitting one of my blocks one on the field. So it's either gonna be Ultimo or it's going to be Draconox. Whereas Champy and Bullberry are safe this round because they won the tribute. Now I mentioned before the plus three stat is something I was gonna be going over. 
The plus three stat here means that Molo is going to go before anything else in the field that also has a three stat in its speed. Like Bullberry, for example, who has a three in its speed, but because Molo has a three plus, it's going to go before Bullberry, which is shown here. It goes before Bullberry does because it's third in line instead of it being fourth. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can actually, this is only a screenshot, but you can actually hover over these things right here. These are the Plox powers that are actively happening during the game right now, right? Like these are the ones that like, when you do a thing, these activate sort of things. That can be anything from like, if you have all one color deck, you get your monster that you play on the field is gonna get a plus two to its speed. Or if you have all one color deck, your all your Plox mons that go onto the field are gonna get plus one attack. Uh, if you play a Ploxmon that has no, nothing, it has no ability. It gains the ability of having armor plus two, but let's go look over a Grudgeon real quick. Grudgeon does have an ability. And when you look at a Ploxmon card, this is what they look like. Their name is here, their power is here, their speed is here, their HP is there. And if there's a symbol in this spot on the card, it means it's an ability. Also, you can see that there's a bunch of text right here in the middle of the card, Paint Split 1, and that's Grudgeon's ability. And the text below it is explains what it does. And that's it. So if you guys are looking to get more information or I may have missed something on the screen that you have questions about, go down below into the description and click on the link to head to the Discord for Ploxmon and get the game yourself, guys, and go talk to people there. The devs are super happy to help and teach anyone want, like that wants to learn to play how to play. Well, hope to see you there, guys. Bye-bye. Now I'm the king of the swingers, oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop and that's what's bothering me.